Well, I've been given some old bed slats and I thought, well, what can I do with them? What I thought I'd do is upcycle them and make some <laughs> Christmas decorations with them. First thing I want to do is make sure they are coated and with a red colour. But I don't want it to be a solid red colour. So all I've got here is a little plastic part. I'm going to put some red paint in there. A little bit of water, thin it down and then give that a mix in. And this is going to be a really quick upcycle, but I think it's going to work really well. Well, hopefully, you never know. Now I've got that to the thickness I want. All I'm going to use is a bit of sponge and sponge that on so that some of the knots and the grain still show through. And this won't take too long to dry on here. That'll absorb into that wood really quickly. I'm going to go over the whole lot of the wood like that with a sponge. Quick wood. Well, these are all nice and dry now and as you can see you can still see a bit of the grain through them and I've done all the ends and all the sides. What I'm going to do now is pop these stencils on here that I've made using my Cricut. Really easy to make as well. I'm going to put roughly where I want them. I tried to do them the width of the actual board as well. So that when I pull this off like this keep it running all in a nice line and now what I'm going to do is just run over that with a scraper because I want to make sure that it's extremely well down before I do anything else. So what I found is from testing the best way to get this to make sure that you've got no leakage is just to go over it with a hairdryer like this, warm up the glue that's underneath and then just go round with your finger and make sure all those edges are really stuck down and warming the glue up like this makes such a massive difference. And then let that cool off for a few seconds. Pop yourself on some gloves. Well, I've already done that one so I was just showing you how to do it really because I cannot believe the difference it makes. And then what you want to do is take your tea expert wood burning gel. And I've tried a lot of the different gels over time. And I have found this one to be the best. There's a few really important tips that you need to follow whenever you're putting this sort of gel on to get the best results. I have found that using these sponge applicators is the best way of putting it on. And I like the larger ones like this, but I also like the smaller ones. You only need a little bit on your sponge and then sponge it on gently running from the outside in and kind of rubbing it on because the thinner layer that you get of this the better go all the way down rubbing this on like this and that will give you such a lovely thin layer and then i will let that dry and this stuff goes forever honestly you would make hundreds and hundreds of these signs with one pot of this and it's not expensive it's a great price and you are putting on a very very thin layer here it's much thinner than using a scraper or anything else so once we've got that first layer on either let it dry naturally and again i find it works much better if it's drier before you heat it up or go over it with air dryer and dry it and once that's dry what i do is i go over it again with this paste to make sure that i've got every everywhere covered because you have got such a thin layer of it on there and honestly it works so much better like this and if you have got any misses then I'm going to show you how to cover your misses up as well again just going over you can see where it is because it's all nice and shiny it goes completely matte once it's dry and you will be shocked how neat and crisp these letters and pictures come out brilliant paste tea expert could you imagine how much time this would take you if you were to burn this by hand and it gives a lovely even result if i've got a discount code for this i'll pop it in the description below where i link the product and once i've done i squeeze out any paste that i've got in my brush or in my sponge and then i wash those in some soapy water and i'll let them dry and i can use them again and now this is nice and dry all i need to do is pull off my vinyl that i've got on here and that will leave behind the actual image that we're going to burn in in a second now if your vinyl is again sticking too well to your wood you don't want to pull the wood up so all you need to do like there i think that's stuck down quite tight i'm going to quickly heat that vinyl with my hairdryer warm that glue up 
and then it'll pull off there really easily. It saves damage in the wood that's underneath, but it'll also help you get this off. But this stuff doesn't actually hurt your hands, but it will stain your hands because it's got a vegetable dye in it. So that's all nice and dry now, and all you have to do is heat this up. Now, I'm going to be using the resinous heat gun. It's got two temperature gauges on it, but the important thing is you've got this that directs the heat. It really does make a big difference. Heat that up for a few seconds and then angle this at the area that you want to burn and lightly keep running it over. That way what you're going to do is you're going to burn what's there but you're not going to burn the wood around it and it then all of a sudden just appears. You wait till you get to see those letters as well. Honestly, they are amazing. It is such a good way of using this and gives you a great result every time. So there's the tree. So let's go on to the M of Merry. Look how nice and neat that M is. And if I get a bit where I've missed, I'll tell you what, I'll do a bit more on that tree and make that a little bit darker in a second. Once I've done the rest of the letters and the other little image that I've got at the bottom and show you how to easily finish that off and get that darker. But there we go, we can see that that has come out lovely and crisp all the way down, but it needs to be a little bit darker on that tree in a couple of places. It might be where I've just put it on too thin or missed it with a second coat. And all I'm gonna do now is take a very fine brush and this washes out your brush, so don't worry. And then paint that on, making sure that I keep in my lines. Now I can see my lines. It might be where the grain is. The grain had lifted slightly and I didn't get it fully in all all that grain and knots also in wood do tend to take a little bit more to burn. Right, we'll push all that in, let that dry for a second, and then we'll heat that up. This will wash out in normal water, so it's fine. Heat our gun up, and now we can go over that, and that will darken that off where I've put that paste again. Oh yeah, that's much better. Give a lovely dark tree. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And I've made two of these, so I've got Merry Christmas, with some decorations on them, and I've got Santa stop here, couple of presents, Santa and a reindeer. Now, you could leave them like this, but actually, I want them to be really glossy. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to seal these, because this is wood after all, before I put the resin on, and I want to make sure that I don't get any bubbles coming up. The other thing is, by using the really thin coats, you don't get any of that really nasty dust, but that is in there permanent, so we don't have to worry. All I'm going to do to seal that with is give it all a quick coat of a matte varnish. So I've got my matte varnish ready now. It's in my pot. I've dipped a little sponge in and all I'm going to do is use my sponge to apply this. The reason I'm using matte is because that won't leave a shiny surface and it'll allow my resin to stick to this so much better. I'm not going to do the sides or anything because I'm only going to resin over the top of this. Now I'll leave that to dry. And then I'll show you how I'm going to pour the resin on and which resin I'm going to use. Well, these are all dry now and I'm going to coat them in the T-Expert Crystal Clear 3 times UV Protect. I know that these are probably going to be outside. And if they're outside, even in the winter, you've still got some UV light. And I want to be able to protect them and avoid it to go in yellow. And this cures quite quickly as well, which is great. It also has an 85D hardness, which is really good news because they're not going to get scratched up so easily as if you had a softer resin. Well, I've decided that I am going to tape off the edges, so I've put some tape on those. I am feeling in a bit of a shaky mood today, so <laughs> I think it may make a bit of a mess if I don't all down the sides. I've got my resin mixed up, and now all I'm going to do is pour some down the centre like this, and let that make its way to the edges with a little bit of help from me. And once that's completely covered, I will put it on my leveling table as well to allow them to be as level as possible while they're curing. See, like, I've already got some down that side. And then we'll just leave those to cure up. Once they're cured up, I'll show you how I'm going to add something to be able to hang them up with. You'll be able to see how pretty they are. These are all finished now and lovely and cured. I put some hooks on the back and some string as well. And they were easy to put in. And I think they've come out great. Let me show you what they look like hanging up. 
Well, there we go. They're all finished now. I really love them and they're lovely and glossy. They would hang up and look great outside or inside. Boot that like button, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check out the video that I've got coming up next, which is another project using this gel paste. It's so versatile and so useful. Links to everything are in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.